Hi, I'm James Gerridge for another update from Market Matters. I'm joined again by Charlie Aiken, Chief Investment Officer at AIM. Thanks for joining us, Charlie. Good morning, James. Always a pleasure. I want to focus on three areas, and, and, and the, the, the view of this video is to try and help people make some money in, in the market. So We're all trying to do on... that, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. It's been, a, it's been a reasonable, difficult market over the last little while. Um, I want to start on 2018, looking ahead. Is the market going to fall apart? in 2018. I want to look at sectors that we should be in, sectors we should avoid, and then potentially some uh, stock picks, some, some winners, and some uh, potentially stocks to avoid. So just on bigger picture, 2018, is it all going to stay together? Are we going to continue? Yeah, look, I still think, to, I think 2018 looks positive. I think I look at global growth. I look, we've got synchronized global growth now. The world is advancing. Earnings growth is still coming through in equities, leading equities around the world. So on that basis, I think we're still in a positive environment. The thing I'm most concerns me is still the bond market and interest rates, and that's starting to slightly unravel at the moment. Yeah, five months ago, we were sitting here and we we're talking about, um, you know, we're starting to see US interest rates rise. We're starting to see that unwind. The Fed is on one end of the spectrum, the market's on another. That's clearly come to, uh, you know, come to pass. We we're talking about the Fed was probably more right than um, the market at that time, and, and yeah, bond yields have started to rise. Yeah, look, my major view of the next uh, next year and how we're positioned in this fund is so we think there's capital risk in bonds, we think bond yields have to rise, we think the one anomaly in the world now is long bond yields. It just seems completely out of whack with the earnings growth we're seeing. I mean, look at last night Amazon, Microsoft, Google, huge numbers. Like the world's going well. These are the biggest companies in the world. Yeah. And bond yields, you know, US 10 year bond yields still got effectively a negative real yield. It's ridiculous. Mm. So I think the biggest danger is bonds. We're running big shorts in bonds at the moment, but what does that mean for you know markets? Well, it means anything that looks like a bond in equities, I think is vulnerable, but I think for, for financials and cyclicals and value, I think it looks really good. And that's what I said to you a few months ago, that's worked well for us. Financials are broadly led markets, and yeah. I think that's gonna continue. Yeah, it's worked well for us as well. We've been you know, long financials, infrastructure, no interest in infrastructure, yeah. stocks, bond life, uh, investments, and it's really, it's, you know, we found most success sort of trying to pick the eyes out of um, A, being in the right sectors at the right time, but I think it's the main thing to avoid those Correct. sectors that I think it's major, the most important headings. point now is thinking about capital risk. You know, mm. To me, the biggest capital risk in markets in equities lies in anything that looks like a bond, quite frankly. And I think you know there's many sectors that look like bonds. Many, this is seven or eight, nine years into a huge bull market in bonds, uh, artificial pricing due to quantitative easing. As that slowly unwinds, I think people will realise, you know, what they actually own. Mm. So for me, I'm very anti-defensives, quite frankly. So what about so so obviously property infrastructure? What about the uh, the telcos, Telstra, the the bond of yeah, no, of, no uh, interest Telstra, no interest supermarkets, no interest healthcare broadly, particularly hospital stocks, yeah. no interest real estate investment trusts, and very no interest in infrastructure. I think infrastructure, you know, the funny thing is, James. There is nothing defensive about the share prices of most defensive sectors by you know the risk of your capital. So if you think the right price for a long bond is 2.4%, well then you go and be free to buy those shares. I don't. So I think there's real capital risk in defensive. So all those sectors that are broadly led markets for you know, utilities mm -hmm. as well for, for whatever it is, six, seven, eight, nine years, yeah. I think they're reasonably dangerous actually. So safe portfolios or the the, ex, the, the you know, the view people are holding safe portfolios will start to underperform. Well, I think the yield trade's over. You've seen the peak of the yield trade. I mean, interest rates have bottomed globally, no doubt about it. Cash rates and bond yields have bottomed for your lifetime. There's no doubt about that in my mind. It's just whether they edge up or they gap up. Now, mm. the, the consensus view is they just edge up and central banks have their, you know, it all just goes along. Yeah, I, there is a danger of a gap up in bond yields, a genuine gap up. And that, that, that to me, could drive a violent rotation in equities. Well, interest rates have been falling for the last 30 years. I know, so. I'm so used to it, it's baked in. Exactly. But you think about it, who's the marginal buyer of a long bond if it's not a central bank? Well, it's not a sane person. Mm. You know, it's not, not you or me going, well, I'd love, love to pay no, the German government. You know, think about a German 10-year bond. I mean, it's ridiculous. It yields 0.44%. Germany's growing, the Eurozone's growing at 3%, inflation's 1.8%. In economic theory, that bond should be 4.8%, mm. not 0.44%. So I think there's real dangers in that. But, the funny thing is, if you get a rotation from defensives to cyclicals and financials, a big one, markets will advance due to the weightings of financials. Yeah, and, yeah. and, 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 and Australia will do Australia quite well. well. You yeah. know, we're dominated by financials. We had a big weighting in the resources space. Resources have started to do well. Have you got much interest in, obviously, your, your, your long financials? 
uh, much interest in the resource space. Well, we play China directly via China. So we're big in Chinese consumer stocks, Chinese financials as well. We have some Tencent. a bit of that stuff, but you know, no, we've taken Tencent down to be honest. Like we've rotate, that's part of our rotation. We do think that some of the tech stuff could actually get rotated from is, as interest rates rise. That could be the fangs, et cetera, even though they're going to have a you know, good day today or what next week yeah. on earnings, you know, there could be a rotation from them as well. So we've taken the portfolio really back to value and cyclicals, and it really takes you back to you know financials. Yeah, we've got the odd mining service stock in Australia that we think are going quite well, but they're small parts of our portfolio. What do you reckon about things like um, aristocrat? We've got aristocrat in the portfolio. Uh, we're overweight the financial space. Um, uh, opportunities this morning where we're buying in the market this morning, IWF after the institutional raise um, recently. You know, what's your take on Aussie stocks? Any opportunities there? Oh, there's always, look, we've always got something in Australia. Our, one of our biggest investments is Aristocrat. We think it's the world leader in, you know, poker machine software. Mm. We think it's a software as a service business rather than a cabinet maker. Yeah. And if you price it as a software as a service business or repeatable earnings, it's worth a lot more than $23. So, and a big result coming up, you know, Aussie dollar falling. I think it looks really good, Aristocrat. Yeah, that brings the other, the other story is around the Aussie dollar falling. Yeah. Like, you know, the interest rate differential is, is, is um, you know, the market starts to catch on to that. Yeah, it's going to buy the Aussie dollar. You know, well, I mean, so the Aussie like dollar probably doesn't fall too much because commodities are actually hanging in. But look, should it be 75 cents? Yeah, it should, right? So US dollar earners, obviously a big part of our portfolio in Australia, you know, aristocrat. We're also big in closed up bank because we think you know, that's been good for us. And we think that's really cheap. Another good result coming yeah. up hopefully in November. I saw them a few weeks ago in London. I think that one's going really well. So the only things we own in Australia are genuinely best of class offshore mm. earners. You know, will banks be lifted and, you know, I probably should have owned Macquarie Bank, they had a good result today. They, they fit, did. They really. fit into that. You know, they do fit into that, right? But, you know, we, we have banks around the world. And We're I the think, same. Yeah, sure. Too picky, too picky on price. Yeah, We're but, looking 92. But look, I think, like, you know, broadly, Aussie dollar comes down a bit. Interest rate differentials, you know, drive the US dollar. US bond yields beat Aussie bond yields. I, I, yeah, look, there's a scenario where Australia does quite well. Yeah. So we do well into Christmas, we do well into, you know, there'll be fits and starts. The market, you look at the US reporting season, there's been some big variances in company performances after they've reported. You know, there's, there is volatility coming back yeah. into a market that's been, you know, very um, sanguine for, for a long time. Do you think that's going to be a, a Well, a I think the next forward? level of it, I mean, for the Wall Street to advance, for the Dow to advance, S&P to advance, you really need financials to totally take over, right? Mm -hmm. And cyclicals and pretty much anything that's in manufacturing in America, domestic manufacturing, financial cyclicals, they've got to lead it from here. Mm -hmm. And you've seen that, Caterpillar, third earnings upgrade this Factor. year, 3M, big earnings results. Mm -hmm. So those traditional US cyclicals are actually doing quite well. And my view on global markets, where I'm still constructive, you look at Caterpillar, what is Caterpillar telling you about the world? The world's going pretty well. Mm -hmm. And if you look at their guidance and their commentary, you know, if the other way around, you know, one of, the, one of the great canaries in the coal mine of the, you know, of the big recession was actually Caterpillar. Mm. Ordered, and they're going the other way. So look, I think the year ahead's constructive. I think you need to think about your portfolios in Australia because mm. most Australians are just a just bucket load long yield, right? Mm. That is not going to lead markets, in my view. So reposition your portfolio to the, the reflation trade. Yeah, to agree, um, yeah. That's happening. Um, 2018 is going to be a reasonable year for equities. The back end of this year, all looks good, global growth picking up, and uh, it's really important to obviously position your portfolios accordingly in the right sectors and avoid the wrong ones. But it's becoming, and it has been for the last three or four months, and it always is really, it's a genuine stock pickers market. Mm. You pick stocks and you go with them at conviction, both long and short, I think you can beat these indices well. And that means even if the indices go nowhere, I think that you're seeing great divergence starting to break out. I think this is great for you know, stock pickers, people who provide advice on stock picking, people who are prepared to drive in a different lane to passive. Mm. You know, passive's gonna give you the return of the passive return, that's fine. Yeah. But these markets are actually giving you starting to give divergent stock and sector returns. And if I'm right about bond yields and interest rates, that will continue. In fact, it will accelerate. Mm. So, you know, 2018 will not be a year that all, you know, everything gets lifted. I absolutely do not believe that. Mm. There'll be some, there'll be some stocks that are down 20, 30% on this view, there'll be stocks up 20, 30%. Mm. And it really is breaking out to a stock picker's market. And that's 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 what's driving our returns. It's probably driving your returns yeah, as well. It is. You know, and that's the exciting bit about it, actually, James. Yeah, exciting year ahead. A stock picker's market, the end of passive investment. Stay active, and we'll talk to you again soon.